All right, we've got the brass part done. It's time to machine the aluminum bit. And uh, I've already got the machining done before I'm filming this intro. I gotta tell you, again, if you're a pro, it's gonna be frustrating. There are probably more mess ups in this aluminum part than there are in the brass part. And they're even stupider, possibly. Though no major hardcore crashes with the big end mill. Let's get to it. This was actually right after I did the brass. I had seen this uh, super glue method on the internet and I figured I'd give it a try. I slapped this all together, let it dry, put it in, and everything was going beautifully. It was throwing chips, it looked good. I was at like 40% feed and I got cocky and started to bump that feed rate up. And of course, I snapped my last two flute uh, eighth inch. I threw in a four flute, changed my settings, and of course goofed it royally and just tanked the end mill right into the aluminum. Now I have this really nice coated uh, ball and mill three millimeter that I thought I'd try but then the super glue finally snapped. So I just called it quits for the day. I cleaned the machine, uh, pulled everything out, and decided to just start over, fresh start. This is the um, measuring tool that came with the Tormach. And I'm gonna just, I think this is how you do this. I'm just gonna stick this on here. and find an edge. This should work, I guess, although maybe the inside jaw would be smarter. It should all be parallel to themselves, I guess. No, I'll do it on the inside jaw, because let's just not do dumb things today. And I just went back and forth, tapping and measuring and tapping and measuring until I had just the tiniest fraction of, uh, of change between sides. A fresh end mill arrived and it was time to start again. Well, that was incredibly dumb. I left this handle on there and it fell to the side and loosened up the vise a tiny bit. Two lessons. Always take your handle off and tighten your stuff down more than that. That was dumb. I'm gonna attempt to re-zero uh, this off of that back corner there because this is an odd piece and I don't have it all modeled in the software and there's enough of an edge left there. I think I can re-zero it off that back corner and we'll just see what happens. And everything was going, you know, fairly smooth, kind of retracing my previous steps until I got to this point. My son Isaac and his buddy Owen came in to check out the machine. What do you guys think of this? So it's pretty obvious to me now what's happening. I've got it clamped this way and of course with nothing there that's not going to supply enough pressure. Um, so my alternative is to clamp it down onto a surface and mill into it. And right now I'm just really afraid I'm gonna mill it. I'm gonna hit my, my bed. Um, I don't know. I'm not really sure what I'm gonna do here to get that uh, because I can't clamp here. This is at an angle which totally screws it up. So either I use a different piece of aluminum that's uglier and mill it down to the right size and finish it on a wheel or I clamp this down and figure something out but this is pretty beat up so I think I'm gonna retire this and use the ugly piece alright I've got the ugly aluminum in I've got the part to where it should be right in the middle here even though this is ugly I can buff this up take this super glue off of here buff this up maybe brush it or something I don't know but I just wanna get this part done uh, so that I can say I did it. 
Um, so I've got the part in between these messed up lines, I think, hopefully, I don't know. We will see how it works. Oh no, I forgot to upload the new code. It's gonna go all the way down to that base again. Oh my God, this is gonna fail. Uh, I'll just offset the file 25 millimeters and I think I should be okay. I think. Everything was going beautifully with this cut actually. I don't even remember what I did, if anything. Maybe I adjusted the feed again like an idiot, but I don't remember. And I snapped the end mill. I bought a whole bunch of eighth inch end mills, figuring I'd, I'd break more. And they came in this generic, I swear I ordered high speed steel, um, but these don't look right. Maybe I clicked on the wrong thing. If you look at the flutes, the flutes are different than the high speed steel flutes. And it's got a different shine to it. I suspect these are for wood. I think I might just be done with this project for today unless I do a different pass with a different end mill. Uh, I don't know, I'm gonna try one of these and see what it does after adjusting my settings to be less aggressive, I guess. Yep, that end mill just shut off like nothing. Like nothing. Fun. So I'm stuck until I order more eighth inch end mills, I guess. Actually, I refuse to be stuck here. I've got this one that's mostly done. I'm going to use a bigger end mill. I'm gonna rip the vise out. I'm gonna put this underneath it. I'm gonna clamp it down up here and I'm gonna try to just get this outline done. Damn it, I don't care if it's pretty. I just want this project done. So that's what I'm going to do. The aluminum ended up being uh, warped a bit, so I ended up having to clamp it on both ends. And what I would do is I would reduce the feed to zero, reduce the RPMs to zero, turn off the coolant, and move the clamp, and then bring everything back up to speed. Uh, it was a little bit precarious, but it worked perfectly. Oh, and I'm using that beat up 3 8 inch end mill because all it had to do was the outside contour. The job is done and we are so close except I goofed it here. I had referenced off of the far side in the back corner not this updated stock. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to adjust the model to have like a hook here for a wristwatch or something and I'll come back in and cut that real quick and then I'll also bump it down a bit so I can get this last level. That's a bit too much to rip off so I could actually mill through it. This this project might actually be a success one day if I just keep chipping away at this. One of the cool things that I'm learning about machining is that you can just keep taking away stock and you can actually salvage a project. You can't do that with 3D printing. Uh, so that's pretty interesting. So I forgot to record the last little pass, but it was completely uneventful. Now I just gotta pull this out of here and see if it fits the brass, because if it doesn't, um, well, there's nothing I can do about it. I don't, I don't have any end mills small enough. There it is. Ooh, that corner is all chowder, but luckily I have an edge break. Let's see if it fits the brass. Okay, here are the two pieces. They slide together like that, and... Oh my goodness. Let's clean it up. Okay, time for the post-mortem. There's not a lot looking at this that I can learn, like the brass one. I, I learned a bunch looking at it. More of the lessons I learned on this one were about 
fixturing and stuff like that. The finish, I'm just going to ignore because the main lesson here, the main lesson that I learned with this part was that I need to just sit down and study up and figure out how to do proper feeds and speeds instead of this kind of pecking at, uh, you know, things that I find online and just trying them out. I should, I should do it properly. I've got G-Wizard and FS-Wizard downloaded. I'm going to start playing with those and seeing if I can't get proper feeds and speeds. They don't have to be, you know, perfect. They just have to be kind of close to the right thing. Aside from that, fixturing. Fixturing and keeping everything parallel. I need to make sure that all my stock and my vice and everything is parallel to the head of the mill. And I need to get better at fixturing and figuring out uh, how to hold my work pieces. Um, also, you know, looking at the finish on this, one thing I did notice is this aluminum is really soft and I can actually see where I clamped down on it with those, uh, those clamps and I ruined the finish in a few tiny little spots, which is really annoying. Um, I did get a chance to try out my edge break on this piece and I was surprised with how well it added a little chamfer around the edges, but I can't get it around the corners, I can't get around those curves as well as the machine would on a chamfer. And since this is supposed to be a visual piece, I would have much preferred that. But oh well, it's done. My first assembly machine together on the Tormach is done. And there it is. All right. Hopefully next time when I do the next project, everything will be slightly more intelligent and better done. I'll see you then.